Mountain bikes are evolving, geometries have lowered and slackered, new standards have appeared. But one thing that's been slightly under the radar and easy to miss is that rim widths have crept up. But is bigger or wider actually better? Does it make a difference how your bike rides? Put to the test, is a wider rim setup faster or better than a more old school narrower rim setup? Before I get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also get involved in the comments section. Do you think wider rims are better? But how wide are these modern rims? Well, I remember my early days of mountain biking in the 90s when rims were super skinny, wheels would bend and buckle and even completely fold sometimes. Luckily, disc brakes came along and that gave designers freedom to completely change the shapes. And we did, we got sort of, we got square shaped rims, we got round, shallow rims, we got all sorts of different sizes, shapes, weights as well. People threw a lot of material at them. But we tried to find, you know, that sort of stable, lightweight, but strong rim. And it kind of felt that once that settled down, rims didn't really change a lot except of course for different wheel sizes. But now we're getting to the point where rims are definitely getting wider and people are thinking about what that does to the tire. What you often hear with wider rim profiles is that you get a more stable tire uh, with more air volume in there and a bigger footprint of tire that should feel better. But sort of add that together with all the other bike changes like the better geometries, the stronger, lighter bikes. I definitely feel like a, a modern bike will feel better compared to a bike from five years ago if you compare them side by side. However, if you take just one of those changes, like the wider rim profiles, take that one out of the equation, will the bike feel much different? And that's what I'm trying to find out today. I've got two different rim profiles. Actually, the same brand of wheel. I've got E13 and their XCX wheels. I'm gonna try those and see how it feels. All right, the two different sets of wheels I'm running on this video are actually, they're both the same kind of. They're E13 XCX race carbon wheels, but they come in two different varieties, so different internal widths. Obviously both 29er, but you have the IW24 over here and then the IW28, so internal width. And that's the important one here because that's what um, the tire bead sits on. So you can tell the difference just looking at the external widths here, but it depends, you know, comparing one different wheel set to another. They can be different materials, which means the actual the rim uh, wall is different. So actually it's internal width we're looking for here is the really important one. So similar, they are actually slightly different. You can see that the wider rim is actually carbon, but it's painted black, whereas the IW24 actually raw carbon. But, you know, E13 say that this set of uh, wheels, IW24, is a cross-country rider's dream. They're lightweight, they're 1,350 grams for the pair. Uh, also, the front wheel actually comes with a 24 spokes, whereas it goes to the wider rims, they're 28 spokes front and rear. And these weigh 1,520 grams. Uh, the important point here is actually pairing the rim width to the tire width. So E13 actually recommend for the narrower rims that you go 2 to 2.3 inches wide. And then on the wider rims, 2.1 up to 2.4. So yes, I could have gone for a larger tire. Uh, you can get these Vittorio Barzos in a 2.6, but I think 2.6 isn't kind of that realistic for a cross-country bike. And actually they don't recommend the E13 don't going up that big, even on this rim. But those wider rims will actually give you that wider bead. Obviously they sit further apart, so they're more resistant to rolling your tire. So potentially you can run lower pressures. And obviously then again, you can run those wider tires on there as well. Other differences, well, the IW24 come with the lightest spokes that DT Swiss make, the Revolution, so super lightweight build, obviously 24 spokes as well. Whereas the wider IW28 come with triple butted spokes. So added a bit more weight, but it's a more robust build. Obviously you've got the extra weight of the rim, but also the tires I'm running. So Vittoria Barzo has got 235. Same build, I've got the XE Race tires front uh, and rear on both sets, but 225s on the narrow and 235s on the wider rims. 
That adds up to 2,700 grams for the wheel set, minus the rotors actually, uh, for the narrow rims and 2,900. So almost 300 grams difference. And that's all in rotating mass, don't forget, because that, you know, all the extra mass is all on the furthest part away from the hub. So that probably is gonna feel different when I'm riding the bike. Stats aside, how do these two different sets of wheels feel on the trail? Well, today I'm in the forest, the Dean. Beautiful day, I'm gonna go for a ride. I've got my test mule, my Orbea Oys, the new one, love it, amazing. My cross country bike, I've got my Garmin on there to record times. I've got my Garmin Rally pedals to record power, see if that uh, makes any difference from wheels to wheels. So I'm gonna go for an XC loop, quite a short one. It's up, it's along, it's up and down, and then it's down again. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna record all the times and powers, see if there's a difference and see how it feels. Okay, time for the first lap. I'm on the 24 mil uh, wide rims and the 2.25 tires. Get my Garmin set up. I'm gonna actually look at my power, my three second power as I'm riding around. See what that's like. Okay. Lap one done. Uh, that's actually a, a longer loop than I normally do on these type of tests. That was a full lap of the Blue Verde Trail here at Frosty and Cycle Centre, which is 9.6k, uh, 175 metres of climbing. As you can see, 31.54 minutes. Because uh, I wanted to get a decent lap, to be honest, because I wanted to get a feel for these tyres. It's actually the tyres I run on this bike the whole time, on the narrow ones at the moment. So now I'll swap to the wide ones. And it's a decent enough time to get a feel for what they're like. This trail is, it's a British trail centre. So it's hard pack, which is lucky because we've had a really wet couple of weeks in January. Everyone else is bog it, bogging, but this trail is really hard packed. It's nice, it's mainly easy, I would say, nice and flowy, but there's a few sections where I'm right on the edge of the grip on these tyres. I'm really leaning the bike over. So it'll be interesting to see what the wider tyres feel like. Right up to the 28 mil rims, two, three, five tires. They actually look different. You ride along, you see, you know, tires look a bit wider. Don't feel much different yet, but anyway, time for lap number two. Oh my mate. And it's over a K in. Four minutes on the bigger rims and tires. You know what? They feel like they roll slower. Feels like I'm working harder than this slower, but we'll find out at the end. It does feel good for grip though. And you know what has really surprised me? Is the like small bumps. It's quite gravelly this bit of trail. And you can feel those little stones way less. Surprising. Gosh, that last descent is so much fun. These wider tire and rim combo felt really good. Like definitely an improvement in grip. And like I said before, like the feel over the little bumps is good, but it almost feels like I've got, oh, I have got more tires. It feels like that, but you know what I mean? Like when you lean the bike over, there's just gives you more confidence. You've got a bigger, wider, more voluminous tire. 
felt amazing on this bike. It's, this is 120 mil cross country bike, but it goes downhill so well. The, that's the most fun I've had on that bottom downhill in years and years. I loved it. But the time, well, that is interesting. Anyway, back to the inside and I'll go through the data. All right, folks, let's get into the facts and figures. Uh, with this, obviously I ran the same tires, same pressures I did check before I started, same compounds, just different widths. So it was a 9K, 9.6K loop, 171 meters. Start with the narrow rims and tires. So this is the IW24 and the 2.25 Vittoria Barzos. Time of 31 minutes 55, average speed of 18.2 kilometers an hour, normalized power of 237 watts, a work of 418 joules, and guess how many pedal strokes it is? You're right, 2,239, quite a lot. Right, compare that to the wider rims and tires, uh, the IW28s with the 2.35 Barzos. So, a minute and a half slower. That's what I thought was really interesting. Uh, 33 minutes, 26, average speed obviously came down, 17.3 kilometers an hour. Normalized power, 236 watts, so almost exactly the same as the first lap. I did this off perceived effort, so I didn't really know, but that was quite interesting that I did you know, almost exactly the same amount of work, but it was a minute and a half slower. 4.75% slower on the wider rims and tires. Is that a lot? It feels like quite a lot to me. I, you know, I said in the video already that I could feel it. It felt like they rolled slower. Um, roll resistance, I don't know, but definitely there's 300 grams pretty much of added weight. And you could feel that. I sort of talked about it at the start of the video as well, you know, these modern bikes, all these kind of small improvements. If you just took one of those improvements and just changed that, could you feel it? Yes, I could. I could definitely feel the rims and the tire difference. And it made the difference in the results. So, you know, I think for people that are looking for the fastest uh, rims and tire combos, if you're racing cross country, then you have to think about weight. And that kind of probably does mean going for the, you know, less material. A narrow rim and a narrow tire makes quite a bit of difference. Also, I think if you're riding in deep mud, a narrow tire can cut through better. Like we see in cyclocross, they run, you know, obviously, they're, you know, different bikes, but they'll run super thin tires. They do cut through. On this hard pack trail, I don't know the physics of wider versus narrow for rolling resistance, but I think the weight did make a big difference, or you know, 4.75 difference, if you class that as big or not. Um, I did prefer the wider rims and tires, so although they were slower, they felt better to me. You know, riding over those little bumps, riding down the hill, they felt better to me. Yes, probably a bit more sluggish for those uphill switchbacks, but there's not that much starting and stopping on this climb or even on the loop. So I would still pick the wider rims and tires, even though they were, you know, decent bit slower. Let me know what you would do down below. Do you still choose to go for the wider rim and tire, even though they're slower? Don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you like these kind of data videos.